Hello, this is Steven now, and we are back with another Batman 66 episode review. Today, we'll be reviewing the episode, The Cat and the Fiddle, the part two in Julie Newmar's return as Catwoman for season two. And with that out of the way, let's get into the review. We begin our episode with a quick recap that the Catwoman is back and planning a new crime, a new criminal caper, and has tied Batman and Robin into this giant grill and plans to have him be fried. We end the episode there with the usual opening credits, and then we get back to where we left them off. Batman manages to get out of the death trap by maneuver by maneuvering by pushing away the giant magnifying glasses to only burn the ropes, and therefore he and Batman he and Robin can quickly get out of it. We still have yet to know their full cape, Catwoman's full caper. However, we do see her pulling a few pulling a few things off. So. We have a see Catwoman secretly stalking a reclusive millionaire whom she knocks out and takes her place as, while some of her other goons are secretly spying on another millionaire. Batman of course then calls in the cavalry to go to this mu to go to this building. However, when, I love the scene when Catwoman is in the armored truck with this guard and there's this um and when she's revealed that Batman is alive he says, she says, I think one of the first time in the series where a villain says, curses foiled again. And of course she orders her goons to go to plan B. We then find out she and then the, the other person, the other, the other billion, uh, millionaire I'd say, go to this giant, well, go to this building. And as soon as she gets in, she, she cuts, she essentially cuts off the electrical cords throughout the, you know, throughout the elevator so no one can get up via that way. And of course, her, her goons, and, and Jack, the reporter, were all in the building. When Batman, Chief O'Hara, and Commissioner Gordon quickly get there. He reveals to everyone about what, what's going on. These two millionaires are coming here for a meeting where he plans to sell these you know, priceless viol you know, violins in exchange for cash. But the reason they've been done at this building is because it's a really tall one and it's up at a certain point where the atmosphere won't affect the violins. They haven't been opened in years and if at the wrong temperature they could crumble to dust. But however, you should ask yourself, where's Robin? Well, we can't answer that question as once they find out the elevators are bugged, Chief O'Hara and the rest of the police department and Chief O'Hara and his men quickly run up the stairs, but Batman, with these special rocket propeller jets, puts them under the elevator and plans to use it to go skyrocketing up. We then cut to a scene where Catwoman, in disguise as the female reclusive millionaire, talking to another fellow millionaire. Um, yeah, millionaire. It's a fun scene, it's really great, and I love the bit when she finally reveals herself as Catwoman, but we find out the other millionaire is actually Robin in disguise. Robin's quickly ambushed by Catwoman's men and is about to be thrown out the window. And whilst that's happening, Jack is quickly getting out there, literally labelled Escape Rocket. Literally labelled. But however, Batman quickly gets in time, the goons drop Robin, and quickly get on the rocket, but it's not working. Next thing you know, a bat fight breaks out, and I really like this one. It's really, it's really nice choreographed, and I like how, like how Jack, like Jack's really getting on it. There's a scene where they are dangling outside the window, and Batman says, "Careful, it's quite a drug." For me, this that fight scene is just all fun. But Catwoman realizes that the rocket ain't gonna work, so she gets the money, the violins, and starts walking, and quickly walks out the window on the ledge. Batman and Robin quickly deal with the goons and look out and look out the window and see that Catwoman is about to fall again. However, when she says she'd rather um, she'd rather die, she's about to fall, but then says, You convinced me. It's a really fun moment. And there's a bit of well, sexualized position she does, I will admit. She f Batman throws a bat rope and she ties it around her waist. And she drops the violin and the cash when it's revealed that the majority when it's all fake. Catwoman, however, falls and Rob Batman tries to push him up. However, Jack, not knowing what's going on, secretly gets up and pushes uh, Batman out the window, only for Robin to knock him out. Batman, however, is 
who catches onto Catwoman, and Robin slowly lifts the pair up. And I like this, and this, and I honestly really like this scene, especially when Catwoman asks his relationship status, whether he's married, steady, or single. He reveals that he has, that this crime-fighting life doesn't have him free time for any relationships, and I love when Catwoman says, well, do I have a girl for you? We then cut to the final scene, where we are back at Commissioner Gordon's office, with Catwoman about to be sent off to prison. Sent off to prison, and it's revealed that Batman did kind of testify at her, at her trial, and she'll be going away for quite a while. But Robin says, "Don't worry, with good behavior, you could be out in maybe seven and a half years." But she's worried she might be considered too old by then. I love how Batman says, "Don't worry." There'll be, I'm sure there'll be someone waiting for someone as beautiful as you. And just when you think Catwoman's about to give her Batman a kiss, he ends up pretty much a sort of like, you know how cats go up and stroke and stroke by your leg and meow? Well, she kind of does something like that, like that a bit, and then she's taken away. Robin questions, will this be the last time we'll see of her? But Batman is not so sure. And Gordon says, Batman, are you blushing? And that is, an, honestly, that line is something I would love to hear again and again. But Batman says, no, it's just the weather. And we end the episode there with Batman next week tackling the minstrel. Well, we'll have to wait for that episode. Let's finish this review. Honestly, things have not really changed Changed here. Uh, I'll do like how Chief O'Hara and Gordon are playing a bit of a role here and you know trying to apprehend Catwoman though it does go to Batman and Robin it doesn't really you know you know it's still something to be noted I like how Robin does a bit of disguise work here which is pretty fun and I like how Batman here is getting is getting a bit of character development as it's clear he's developed feelings for Catwoman and honestly and honestly in comics the Catwoman and Batman pairing have been going on forever and speaking of Catwoman Julie Newmar is again owning this role. We get a little bit of, uh, the ca I will admit the character does get sexualized a bit, but I think it's all in good fun. For me, ca Julie Newmar could balance being straight up villainous and even murderous to, you know, to being, having funny lines, which I really absolutely believe she's pull she pulls off, but also to develop, her character gets development with her attracting with romantic feelings towards Batman, which has been going on in comics, I think, since before her appearance on the show, but it's it's always a part of the Catwoman and Batman character for these two to constantly be attracted to each other. Julie Newmar is, for me, this show's Catwoman, and I absolutely love her. These are really, f and this is a really, really great performance, and her character is getting more developed, and it, trust me, expect this to be more as we go on in the series. Jack here is also just another fun character addition. While most of the goons here are just generic, he can't. This guy shares Jack or she portray or has a lot of. This guy, oops, sorry, this guy has a lot with Alan A. Dale. You know, a person that is secretly in league with the villain. But I really like his performance over Alan A. Dale. I really feel Alan A. Dale was just like his, like his, how he says a line like this in such a voice. It creeps you out. But here I like how he's more laid back, he's more chill, and he's more crooked. And honestly, that is just a bit more better than what we got with Alan A. Dale. And the actor, Jack Kelly, for me, in this role, is absolutely great. He's an actor who's done many movies and TV work to his name, and he's really good in this role. The Cat in the Field for me is another fun episode, and it's really fun to watch. Um, now this two-parter in general, even though Cat in the Field was great, I, really, I don't see really any bad things with this episode, or it's or the one that preceded it. But I will admit, other episodes that come after always feel a little bit different compared to Catwoman's first outing, which I've always felt is her superior, her her best episode. But what makes these episodes great is to see Catwoman's evolution, and it's worth watching. And there we have it. And there we have it. This was The Cat and the Fiddle, Julie Newmar's return to the role of Catwoman uh, for season 2. It's, wor it's worth watching to see her character be further developed, but we're not done with her yet. Trust me, we've got more episodes to do with her this season. Join us next time as we review the first ever episode debut, and sadly only episode debuts, of the minstrel so tune in next time for the same steven time the same steven hour and the same steven channel and ladies and gentlemen as always so long for now